If you're sick of your garden getting decimated by disease and pests, then this is the video you need to watch because it will allow you to determine when you need to apply organic or synthetic pesticides, fungicides, you name it, before the attack hits. If you've been gardening for a while, you already know that once disease and pests actually physically are represented in the garden, it's much too late to do anything. So this video, we're gonna look at how to determine long before you see anything, when it's time to actually take preventative measures for the pest of your choosing. Now this is using science and this is a refined science at this point. The reason why it's a refined science actually comes down to the fact that producers on agricultural scales that you see in the prairie provinces of Canada, all the way to greenhouse setups or fruit producing setups in Ontario and BC. And that is the use of something called GD. All it stands for is growing degree days, and the growing degree days are made up of something called GDUs, which is growing degree units. Every pest has its own set of units before it's triggered. Every pest has a range. It has a bottom range and it has an upper range. So if it dips below the bottom range, it's too cold for any sort of reproduction or hatching, if you will, to take place. If it goes above the range, it's actually too hot and therefore that pest can't survive because now it's too warm, which makes them kind of similar to plants in that sense. Plants also work on GDUs and GDDs and if they fall outside their ranges that they enjoy, they can kill them, obviously, uh, but it also can just hamper their growth, hamper their reproduction, how many flowers they produce, fruits, veggies, that sort of thing. So if we know every pest has a range in which they show up, we can now slowly figure out when those are going to hatch. Now, on the other side of it, that token is if you have a cooler year. So for us here, I'm still in my bunny hug, yes, and that is because it is so cold here still. So this year, you can expect pests, if it continues to stay cool, to show up much later in the year because it's not warm enough for these guys to do anything or reproduce or hatch, if you will. How do you determine when they're RSVPing to your garden's invite? Uh, that is with heat and cold and GDUs. So this is not complicated at all. There are so many different ways to do this, none of which involve math. Number one way is actually through a plant sensor. So the earthworm plant sensor that I helped develop, and I'm not trying to sell this here because it actually doesn't, there's no feature in it yet that looks at disease and pests. There is a feature that tells you when it's best to harvest because remember how I said plants are heavily reliant on GDUs? Well, turns out you can actually use GDUs to determine when the best time to harvest your produce is for maximum flavor, maximum texture, you name it. Uh, you can also use the BRICS model as well, but regardless, that sensor can calculate it for you. Now, the other side of the token is actually just doing a Google search. Shockingly enough, you can just Google Saskatoon GDUs and you will suddenly get a total sum for the year along with an actual number given to each and every day. And you will very quickly realize if it goes below zero degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it suddenly registers no units because anything below zero, nothing's being registered, it will begin to actually not count points either because it's now getting too warm for there to be any growth. There's too much stress on the ecosystem as a whole. So if you were to Google search GDUs for Saskatoon, it's going to give you a value. Now you can compare that value against this chart here, which I will link below. Now this chart here is essentially giving you the number of units and how they apply to specific pests. So if we're looking for or horned worm, cucumber beetle, slugs, snails, cabbage moths, aphids, thrips, mealybugs, whatever the case is, whatever your problem child is, it will give you a value. And all you need to do is go in and look at your units. Now, for me personally, I don't start checking those units until probably the middle of July, because in most cases, the units are so high that need to be accumulated in my area we will not accumulate them for a long time to come. So that's why I can wait a little bit later. Now, if you're obviously in a warmer climate, you need to check those units much sooner. So 
take a look at what they are right now, and you can get kind of a feel based on the current temperatures you've been experiencing over the last month, approximately how many units you will accumulate every two weeks, and then just review that every once in a while. What you're looking for is for your units to be within a week of when that pest going to show up. So for easy calculation, let's say that cucumber beetles show up at 1,000 units. No, they don't actually show up there, but easy math. 1,000 units is when they begin to show up. And we know for the last one to two weeks, we've been accumulating 100 units per week. And we're at around 800 units. Well, we know in approximately two weeks that we very likely will have cucumber beetles. Now we can even use a little bit more preemptive science here and look at what the future forecast is and if it is much warmer than what we're currently experiencing or what you've experienced to make up that first 800, then it's a probably pretty good indication that your 1,000 mark is going to come a little bit sooner. So maybe your cucumber beetles are going to show up at a week and a half. Well, once you're a week out, you go out and you begin to start applying your preventative measures, whatever they may be. For cabbage moss, for example, it can be literal nylons because, yes, that's that works. It actually works. Pantyhose works wonderfully. But, of course, you don't want to look at pantyhose all summer, so you just need to put it out about a week before everyone pops up. Now, say you're having a cooler year and you're noticing the temperatures are suddenly starting to decrease. Well, now you know you could use a preventative measure like the pantyhose and be okay, because of course in this case, pantyhose is a mechanical means of using pest control. So once it's on, it's preventing the issue. So those of you put on early and not worry about it if you're getting a little bit cooler. If you're getting cooler and you're looking to fight, for example, cucumber beetles and you want to dust your plants, well, applying that too early isn't going to benefit you. So you need to watch it just a little bit more closely to make sure that you're acting on getting the stuff out there at the appropriate times and then obviously reapplying until your quote unquote season is done. So I guess ultimately the tool I'm trying to give you here right now today is simply a way to save money on as your insecticides, your organic or synthetic means of using these because we don't discriminate here on this channel. And I also want you to be successful and not get turned off by the fact that now your poor garden is suffering from powdery mildew and downy mildew and you feeling helpless because that's not fun. <laughs> that's never fun. So I encourage you to actually try this method, give it a shot. It may feel overwhelming at first, but rest assured you can't screw it up. There's just... Gardening's fun. There's, you're never going to have major issues. Let's just say your garden isn't going to be the end of the world if it doesn't succeed. And you always have next year, which is shocking to say, but if you're into gardening, it's a lifetime hobby. Now, if you want to look at some really cool ways to actually prevent against powdery mildew, for example, or other pests, then you probably want to check out this video here on garden hacks that actually work because some of them are incredibly clever and they are based in science. I will talk to you geeks later.